Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. For today's video, I'm going to be filming the my top three favorites in every category video. I've been seeing this going around. I'm going to link a lot of others down below in the description box. And for today's video, I want to share with you guys my top three favorites in every base category. So foundation, concealer, bronzer, blush, powder, highlight, all of the above. And then if you like this, I might do like an eyes and lips part two. Let me know if that's something you'd want to see in the future. I feel like we have a lot to get through in this video, so let's go ahead and hop into it. Okay, so a few other videos I've seen like this, I've seen categorized with price point. So uh, between the three favorites, one drugstore, high end, and luxury. But I decided to go just my three favorites in general. I didn't want to say like based on price point because I wanted them to be my actual favorites. And if they all happen to be drugstore, great if they all happen to be high-end like at least those are my true favorites so let's start off with primer which is actually the only category i don't have three in i you guys know i'm not the biggest primer person and i didn't want to put in three just to put in three so i was like you know what i have two that i think are standouts that i would repurchase that i would continue to reach for very consistently and i wanted to shout out those sam with me you might know the first one has been a favorite of mine for so long this is the ordinary high adherence silicone primer this is actually the primer i'm wearing today i put a little bit of this on my forehead where i have some breakouts just to kind of smooth it out this is great because it's smoothing it's slightly gripping and it's also slightly hydrating like it, it does it all and it's five dollars but a newer favorite of mine that i cannot be without is this one from hard candy this is called the sheer envy hydrating primer this is a subscriber made me buy it product and i'm so glad that i did because this is the best gripping primer i've ever used and it's only seven dollars so these two again they just happen to fall under the drugstore price point you guys know i love drugstore makeup but they're better than any high-end primer i've tried i really debated with this one because there are uh, three new foundations i've been testing recently and when you saw me do my uh, speed reviews video you heard me rave about two of the three so i was like should i put either of those in my top three and you know what if i revise this video and do an updated one in like a year or so maybe you would see that see one of those at least in this category but for now i'm like you know what let me stick with my tried and trues that really have been my favorites for a while and it's these three okay these two were an easy choice this third spot i went back and forth on so so i'll i'll, I'll explain first of all you guys already know it this is the urban decay stay naked foundation i wear 30 nn and this is just one of the most amazing foundations out there in my opinion it is so thin so it doesn't look heavy it's very smoothing it is so long wearing it's undetectable it looks like nothing like it's so perfect similar to this this is a slightly different finish this one's a little bit more radiant but also very thin and pretty undetectable it's the Oma beauty say what foundation i wear fair lady t2w in this which is a little warm and a little tan for me right now i'm a little tan i think it might match me right now actually today I, I don't know if I'm showing up on camera, but in person, my face, I feel like is much lighter than my body. Like this actually could have been a better match, but this is one of my favorites, always has been. And the third spot, I thought about going with the Flower Beauty Skin Tint, the Get Real Serum Foundation, because it's so beautiful. And I had that in my list. Actually, I'm so paranoid about my um, sparkling water. You know, when you drink them and they like make those popping sounds, I'm like, is that picking up on my mic? We'll put it over there just in case but i decided not to go with the serum foundation and i was like you know what the bare minerals original foundation i wear the matte version because i like my foundation finish to be a bit more satin as opposed to really glowy because the original is super glowy if you want to have that healthy skin look you really can't beat the bare minerals original i'm actually wearing the original liquid today so today i'm wearing the liquid version of this I don't know how it's coming across on camera because one thing I've noticed and I've talked about before, when I think my makeup looks perfect in person, I think on camera it doesn't always translate because that, because the, this one, the liquid one is a bit of a lighter coverage. So I feel like it doesn't always translate on camera, but it looks great in person. Whereas the opposite is also true where if you're wearing very heavy glam makeup that in person might look very heavy, a little bit overdone it is very flattering on camera but um one more little tangent about this it broke though so that's such a bummer the 
the lid it's supposed to kind of twist like that and it completely broke off for me so it's kind of difficult for me to get product out which is a bummer i would say these end up looking similar on the skin but this i find to be a little bit long a little bit more long wearing and you can build up the coverage of this one more and it's easier to touch up because it's a powder for concealer the first one I don't have right now, and I actually wanna repurchase it. I have been holding off thinking I'm gonna repurchase this once I work through some concealers. And I have worked through some concealers recently. Maybe I wanna finish up like one or two more and then I'm gonna bring this guy back into my collection. It is the Milani Conceal Plus Perfect. I actually had a friend text me the other day and she was like, I have really dark under eye circles. I need a concealer. I don't wanna spend a lot of money. I want something I can just easily get at the drugstore which one do I get? And I didn't even have to think about it. I was like, get the Milani, it's amazing. It, in my opinion, is better than any high-end concealer I've tried. The coverage, how smooth it sits under the eyes, like no complaints. Also though, I love the NYX Born to Glow. This has been one of my favorites recently. This has a little bit of a different applicator to it. It has kind of the spongy ball as opposed to the doe foot that most concealers have. I wear this in the shade Vanilla. This is definitely more of a medium coverage, but for that reason, I really love it for everyday wear. Thought about putting in the pure one that I've been talking about recently, the Pure Cosmetics Push Up. This is an honorable mention. Again, I feel like I haven't been trying this out long enough, but currently, it's my favorite. It's what I'm wearing today. But the other one rounding out the top three, this is, it's so good. Like, it's so underrated. I, I wasn't sure if I wanted to include it because it's a different type of concealer. It's not a liquid, it is a cream, but it's so good and I highly recommend this. Not as much for under eye concealing, but I recommend this if you have acne or like scarring, discoloration, whatever. So this is the Bare Minerals Bare Pro. Yeah, so it's a cream concealer. I wear the shade Light Neutral. I recommend getting a shade that's super close to your skin tone. This one is. I, you want one that's going to match your foundation. This is incredible at covering up acne. Also, I think it's beautiful on the under eyes. I tap it out. It's very lightweight. You can't see it at all. It, it's undetectable. But this for covering up breakouts, which as I keep mentioning, I've got a lot of right now. And this I have been reaching for almost every single day. So I would just like take a brush, tap into it and like dust over some scarring that I have and some active breakouts. This gets rid of them better than anything. Let's talk about powder. If you've been around my channel for a while, you probably remember how in love I am with the Bite Beauty Changemaker. This was my tip top favorite powder for a while. Now I would say that all three of these are tied and I reach for them for different reasons, but they're all very good. Who remembers when I used to say a powder is a powder, you can't tell the difference because here I am now saying that these three like stand out above all the rest, but I swear that they do. But this is the Bite Beauty Changemaker Powder. This one is super lightweight. You can use this to set your products in, but I also think just a light layer of it is great for a finishing powder just to dust over top which I've gotten some questions recently, kind of how to use a finishing powder versus a setting powder. When I'm saying a finishing powder, I'm more so referring to something really lightweight that I'm dusting over to kind of blur everything together, maybe even give like a bit of a radiant finish depending on the formula. Whereas for setting, I'm typically looking for something a little bit more heavy duty, but you can kind of use them interchangeably, but sometimes you might reach for one for different purposes. One might be better at a purpose than the other. And there are some that are just designated kind of for one. I'm thinking like the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powders. Those are more so created to be a finishing powder. They're not necessarily there to lock products in, but this I kind of like to use both ways, but more so as a setting powder. And then this one I use to set and to finish. This is the Kosas Cloud Powder. It's so pretty. I'm wearing it today. I just feel like it is so blurring that you can't even see the texture on my skin. I mean, from a certain angle, for sure you can see it because it is texture, that's how it works. But especially when you look head on, like I just think it does such a good job camouflaging and diffusing any texture. It's so beautiful. It's a baked powder though, and I do notice that this can get hard pants, which I don't love. I don't know why I said hard pants plural, but it can get hard pan, which I don't love, but when it does, I just take a piece of tape, put it on top and remove the tape, and it just takes off the tiny little bit of that top layer and then it's back to normal. I wear the shade Breezy in this, and I wear two in Changemaker. And then, rounding out the top three, we have to talk about the Bare Minerals Mineral Veil. 
This one also I like for setting and for finishing. If I'm ever having a day where I'm like, hmm, my makeup's looking a little bit patchy, I need something to come in and save the day, I will take a little bit of this with a really, really fluffy brush and just dust around, kind of buff over things, and it's like magic. Everything just looks more blended. This has more of a matte finish, so I, I do actually think it would be nice for all skin types because it's not too much of a heavy matte, but I do feel like it locks products in. It's beautiful. I use it to touch up. I have the SPF version, so they have a plain version and then they have the SPF version. I would only recommend the SPF version if you're on like the lighter to fair skin tone side of things because I have heard from people that they get a white cast from this. I don't notice a white cast from it, but it, I, I can't say. Maybe if you're a little bit tanner than I am, you might. So I would say I would recommend the regular version and not the SPF version. Okay, moving along to bronzer. The first one I'm sure you know, and the second two you might be a surprise for you, but the first one is Milani. I'm wearing a bit of this today. I was definitely going for more of like a rosy blushed look, so I went very light on the bronzer, but this is their Silky Matte Bronzer. I've got a really big pan in it. I've loved this one for years. I think it's just so blendable, so creamy, and I wear the lightest shade, which is called 01. Now, one that I added in, and this is technically a contour, but I figured for this category we could go we could combine the two this is the charlotte tilbury uh, film star bronze and glow so it is a palette one side has um a highlight on the other side is the contour shade i do have the mini which they launched for holiday last year but this is actually in a full-size product much larger than this i think that this is so good the mini i want to say was limited edition but perhaps they will bring it a bring it back for holiday this year. And if they do, I definitely recommend buying the mini because there's still a ton of product in here. Just to give just to give a size comparison, like here they are side by side. Also kind of to give an undertone comparison, this one's definitely more of a contour. This, like most of her products, I would categorize as makeup you can't mess up. Like it's not overly pigmented, it's just very beautiful and easy to work with that you really cannot mess it up. I feel like it's so beginner friendly. Yes, it's pricey, but the ease of application and the result for me is worth it. And the final bronzer is a newer one. This is the LYS bronzer. I wear the shade Motive. It's the No Limits bronzer. This one I would say is much more pigmented than the other two. The other two are definitely on the more sheer side and I feel like I build them up a bit. This has a ton of pigment to it, but it's super easy to blend out. Also, I feel like you can't really mess this one up either and I love the triangular packaging. It's super bulky though, so it's kind of hard to store depending on like your drawers or your makeup bag. Just know it's a little bit bigger. Okay, for blush. The first one, this is Persona Carmel. This is such a beautiful pink blush. It, I mean, it's just such a pretty color and their formula, it's kind of like a satiny matte. It's not shimmery, but it also doesn't look flat and dry the way some powder blushes can if they're just almost like too powdery. This has the most subtle radiance to it. It's so pretty and these are super pigmented. So I feel like they'll work for like a range of skin tones even using the same shade. One you could probably guess, another Charlotte Tilbury product. This is their Beauty Light Wand in the shade Pink Gasm. This is such a popular blush, especially because this was the one that went viral in that Madison Beer tutorial that she said she uses and everyone was like, all right, I've gotta have it. It's just so beautiful. It looks incredibly natural, but it has a little bit of a glow. So it's definitely like a sheeny highlighter type of product. So if you're not into that, you prefer something a little bit more satin or matte, you might not love this, but I think it just looks so radiant and healthy on the cheeks. And then this guy that was limited edition, and I think that was the biggest mistake ever. This is the Bare Minerals Blonzer. You know I've been talking about it all summer. This is the shade Kiss of Pink, and I've been getting so many DMs recently from you guys saying like, wait, why can't I find that? Wait, what's going on? Why is it out of stock? It's limited edition. What a mistake. Bare Minerals, this should be permanent. This is so good. See, I love Bare Minerals blushes. I also have their Loose Powder blush. I have their Bounce and Blur blush. That's so hard to say. Both very good, but neither of them stack up to this. This is so beautiful, so healthy. You look like you've got a sunburn. Like, I can't recommend it highly enough. Okay, highlights. We've got a drugstore one. This one is so beautiful. This is the NYX High Glass Illuminating Powder. So they do have a finishing powder with a similar name, but this is different. This is like a cream putty highlight. 
Um, I wear the shade Moon Glow. This, okay, when you're applying your makeup, before you put your powders on, when your skin's still a little bit dewy, you just take a little bit of this and tap it over the cheekbone. It looks so healthy and glowy, almost like a little bit sweaty, but in the best way possible. It is the most radiant, beautiful, natural highlight, and it's from the drugstore. It's so good. Also, this looking so cute in this little piece of plastic packaging. This is another one that is being discontinued, and it's a, it's a terrible mistake. I have no idea why this would ever be discontinued. This is the Ciate London Highlight Formula. I wear the shade Moon Dust. You can see I have hardly any of this left. It's so good. I'm going to be really sad when I'm done with this because... Uh, I've noticed every time I go to link it, like half the shades are missing. But if you can still get this, it's so pretty. And it's one that you can you can build up really blingy. It's actually what I'm wearing today. You can go super blingy with it or you can keep it a little bit more subtle. Like there's just a lot of range to it. Highlight number three, this is from Nabla. This is one of their skin glazing products. These are so good. I debated putting in the skin glazing blush and bronzer into the other categories. They didn't quite make it, but just know like, they almost did because they're so beautiful. It's a really nice baked formula. And this, oh my gosh, if you wanna look like lit from within type of highlight, this is the one. This is the one I find myself reaching for so often. When I'm having a day where I'm like, I need my makeup to look good, I need something that's not gonna let me down, this is the one I'm normally reaching for. Like, you know what, let's go with the Nabla. The, the shade that I have is Privilege and it has this beautiful like pinky rosy undertone. It's just so pretty. I love it. Okay, this was a really fun video because I was just spent the whole video talking about products that I love so much, but I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you want me to do a part two, let me know in the comments down below and thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in my next one. Bye.